Hi guys, welcome to the Migaku MPV user guide video. In this video, we will be showing you how to install MPV Player and Migaku MPV on Windows, and then showing you how to do some basic configuration for both MPV and Migaku MPV. Finally, we will show you how to use the plugin. You can find links to installation guides for both Mac and Linux in the description and pinned comment of this video. If you're using either of those platforms, you can watch your relevant installation video and then come back and pick up watching this guide video from the configuring MPV timestamp. Download MPV for either 32-bit or 64-bit versions of Windows from the SourceForge project page. Then you want to simply extract its zip file into a folder of your choice. Here I have made an empty folder on my desktop called MPV. Once you've extracted the files, go ahead and click mpv.exe one time and then close it. This is important to do once before installing Migaku MPV because it will create the needed MPV directory in your app data roaming directory. That's all there is to installing MPV player on Windows. Let's take a look at installing Migaku MPV now. You want to type app data at the top of an explorer window. Then you want to click roaming and then find the MPV directory. Here you need to make a new folder called scripts and then double click on it and enter that folder. Once you've done so, extract the zip file for Migaku MPV into the scripts folder. You can then launch MPV with the video and subtitle file and you will see that Migaku MPV is running if you press the B key. If you have any issues using the B key to bring up the browser, then please watch the configuring Migaku MPV section of the video which should help you solve that issue. Navigate to your MPV folder in your app data roaming folder. Remember that on Mac and Linux, this will be the .mpv folder found in your user folder. Then you can paste in the mpv.conf file that can be downloaded from the Patreon post next to the scripts folder in this mpv folder. Then go ahead and open that file in your favorite text editor and let's take a look at these options briefly. An explanation for each option is written above that option. Never remove the hashtag symbol before the explanation line as that will cause issues. The first option called save position on quit is self-explanatory. I recommend to keep it enabled. The second option, sub-auto, is set to fuzzy, which means that even if the names of your subtitle files don't exactly match your video files, that they will still be loaded into MPV. This is useful for loading subtitle files of multiple languages. Although note that support to display multiple subtitles on screen at the same time is currently not supported by MPV player, although the MPV devs are planning to add it in the near future. The next options are Alang and Slang, and these are pretty important if you're not studying Japanese, and you would want to change them to the correct language code. These options affect which subtitle and audio tracks are automatically loaded with your video. The next set of options starting with sub dash allow you to change the default styling of the subtitles. The next option sub dash ASS override allows you to overwrite any styling information contained in .ass subtitle files because their styles are not overwritten by default. Last and perhaps most importantly, if you will often be jumping forward or back in a video, for example when seeking subtitles, then you can set these values to load a bit of the video file into RAM, which allows for the fastest video loads possible. The first value is the buffer forward from the current time in a given video, and the second option is before the current time. Note that enabling these options and setting their values to pretty high values can use considerable RAM. So keep that in mind if you're on a system that might not necessarily have a lot of RAM. You can find the Migaku MPV config file within the scripts Migaku MPV folder. It is called Migaku MPV.cfg. An explanation for each option is written above that option. Never remove the hashtag symbol before the explanation line as that will cause issues. The first option in the file is the browser to use. 
The Immerse with Migaku browser extension currently only supports Chrome, so it is recommended that you select it. Chrome is already selected by default, however. The next option is the download directory to use. The default is the download directory for the currently loaded profile. This value should match your Chrome download directory, so if it doesn't, you should type your Chrome download directory path in place of the default value. The next set of values are for advanced users, and I don't recommend a general user to touch them. An advanced user will already understand what these values pertain to, so I won't be explaining them in this guide. First of all, you need to make sure to have both the Immerse with Migaku browser extension and the Migaku Dictionary Plus add-on for Anki installed. You can find out how to install the extension and Dictionary Plus add-on from the guide video on the Patreon post. I've also linked it in the description and pinned comment of this video. You can simply drag video and subtitle files over MPV to load them into it. You can then press B to open Chrome to the Migaku MPV subtitle browser window. In this subtitle browser window, the regular hotkeys from the Immerse with Migaku browser extension also function. You should maintain your computer's focus on the subtitle browser window and not on MPV when using Migaku MPV. With the system's focus on the subtitle browser window, press any of the following shortcuts. The D key or right arrow will seek to the next subtitle. The A key or left arrow will seek to the previous subtitle. The S key will rewind to the beginning of the current subtitle. The W key will hide the subtitles on MPV. The spacebar will play and pause the video. You can also use the search button to search a highlighted word. Or if you have parsed the text using the extension, all unknown words in the corresponding subtitle line will be automatically searched. You can add an Anki card for any subtitle line by pressing the Anki button next to that line. You can right click any subtitle timestamp to jump to that time in the video as well. Lastly, you can left click multiple consecutive timestamps and then click the Anki button to add multiple lines of dialogue to a single Anki card. Here I am loading an incorrectly timed subtitle track into the video. Then I press Shift B to bring up the automatic subtitle retiming menu. I can then select to retime the currently active subtitle track according either to another already loaded subtitle track or according to an audio track of the video file. Longer videos can take a considerable amount of time to automatically retime subtitles. And retiming according to an audio track takes longer than retiming according to a reference subtitle track. Here's an example of retiming based on a reference subtitle track. And here's an example of using the audio track of the video itself in order to retime the subtitles. For most video and subtitle files, the retiming will be nearly perfect. Please note that a resynced subtitle file will be generated in the same directory where the parent subtitle file is located. So you're even able to keep that subtitle for later use as well. Okay guys, we hope that today's video guide was helpful. If you have any issues with Migaku MPV, please tell us about them on the Discord server. We're hoping to continue to improve Migaku MPV well into the future, so we would love to hear feedback from you about where you feel it could be improved most. As always, thank you so much for supporting Migaku.